In this video, we'll see how to estimate heat transfer coefficients for a flow over a flat plate using Nusselt number correlations. When we solved macroscopic control volume problems, for example, the one in which we had a block of ice resting on a table, we had assumed values for the heat transfer coefficient as given. The problem in convection here that we are going to solve is to find this heat transfer coefficient. Heat transfer coefficient can be found out for various geometries. The most general way to do it is to use the Nusselt number correlations. We know that the heat transfer coefficient is uh, defined in terms of the Nusselt number. The Nusselt number is defined in terms of heat transfer coefficient as HL by KF. So knowing Nusselt number, we can find H by multiplying KF by L. Nusselt number correlations, can you can have analytical solutions for it, in which case the dimensionless temperature, the gradient of the dimensionless temperature was a derivative with respect to the perpendicular coordinate at the surface gives a Nusselt number, or we could also have experimental correlations as a function of Reynolds number and Prandtl number. In effect, we'll have expressions or uh, correlations for Nusselt number from which we can find the heat transfer coefficient. And since these are dimensionless uh, expressions, it, uh, there are general uh, expressions for each type of geometries. There are two broad kinds of geometries that we will be considering. One is external flow and other is internal flow. External flow, like flow over a flat plate or a sphere or a, a cylinder or a collection of spheres or cylinders, or internal flow where the flow is through a pipe or a channel. Let's see what external flow is. External flow means the uh, domain of the flow is either semi-infinite or infinite. In the case of flow over a flat plate, the flow is in a semi-infinite regime. The flow over a cylinder or a sphere, it is an infinite regime, infinite region. The general methodology to find out uh, correlations of Nusselt number is to identify the geometry that closely resembles one of these known geometries for which we have uh, Nusselt number correlations. Then find out the fluid property at the reference temperature. The fluid properties such as diffusivity, viscosity, density, and so on. These are required to determine Reynolds number and Prandtl number, or in the case of mass transfer, this Schmidt number. Once the fluid properties are known, we can find the Reynolds number. Reynolds number defines two regimes. One for small Reynolds, it is a laminar regime and large Reynolds, it's a turbulent. So there are different correlations for uh, laminar and turbulent regimes. Then we have to find out whether we need local heat transfer coefficient or an average heat transfer coefficient over the entire surface area. After this is done, we just select the appropriate correlation for the Nusselt number, find the uh, evaluate at this particular values and then obtain the heat transfer coefficient. For flow over a flat plate, we'll first consider the laminar boundary layer. Recall that when you have a flow over a flat plate, the initial regions, the flow is laminar in the boundary layer. Later, the boundary layer goes to a transition regime, and then finally, the boundary layer becomes turbulent. In, so this correlation that we're going to uh, derive now is in the laminar uh, flow. And for laminar flow over a flat plate, the flow is two-dimensional. And the solution can be obtained by what is known as the stream function. Stream function is represented by this quantity psi. And this is the definition of the stream function, where the first derivative 
with respect to y coordinate gives the x velocity and the negative of the first derivative with respect to the x coordinate gives the y velocity. This form of the uh, stream function identically satisfies the continuity equation that is del dot u equal to zero. Once uh, we define the stream function this way, we can reduce the momentum balance inside the laminar bound layer to a form like this, where f is the dimensionless stream function. So this you can immediately see that this is of uh, no dimension by looking at the uh, dimension of these quantities. Psi has a unit of velocity times distance. If you expand all these quantities, this will be meter square per second. And this is uh, velocity times uh, distance, which is again meter square per second. And that square root of that cancels off with this. So f is a dimensionless stream function. Now, apart from f, we also define what is known as a similarity variable eta. Eta is a similarity variable, which is a combination of two independent variables. Notice that uh, like in earlier forms of uh, making equation dimensionless, the variables were normalized by a, a constant parameter like length or a diameter. But here, in the case of a flow over a flat plate, there is no characteristic length scale imposed by the geometry. It's a semi-infinite medium and there is no length scale. Therefore, the dimensionless numbers that come out of this will have a dependence that has to be obtained only from the variables and the properties. And the only, the only the length scale that you can construct from variable and properties is this factor. One over this factor has a unit of length and that is used as a length scale. So because this variable is constructed out of two variables, it is called as a similarity variable. You might have come across a similar variable in transport phenomena where uh, the startup of shear flow, you would have derived a quantity where the uh, wide velocity, uh, wide uh, coordinate was made dimensionless by uh, nu times t, where t was a variable and nu was the uh, nu was the kinematic viscosity. So here it's a steady flow, and the uh, dimensionless variables are u infinity uh, dimension. Uh, Dimensionless parameters are u infinity and nu. There are no other parameters and x. So this uh, similarity variable is used as the independent variable. Now using f and eta, the, the momentum balance equation in the laminar boundary layer can be reduced to this form. Here, f prime denotes the first derivative of f with respect to eta. And f triple prime is nothing but the third derivative and this is the second derivative. What we have achieved uh, by this equation is the original equation had two variables u and v. And it was also a nonlinear um, ordinary differential, uh, partial differential equation. And there were two independent variables x and y. By defining stream function, we have collapsed u and v to a single dependent variable f and using this eta, which is a similarity variable, we have collapsed two independent variables into one variable. So effect, in effect, we have reduced the um, partial differential equation to a Nonlinear ordinary differential equation in one variable. Now, this is uh, being nonlinear, only series solutions or numerical solutions are possible. Numerical solutions have been worked out, but we'll only look at some key features of this uh, laminar boundary layer solution f of eta. Firstly, 
the solution that comes out of such similarity variable uh, equations are called as similarity solutions meaning the when you convert it into the uh, velocity form and you draw the velocity as a function of y at different x they are all similar because the f function is a function only of a combination of y and x the uh, velocity you that you construct from here u will uh, is nothing but this f prime will be a function of y and x in this form y by square root of uh, y into y by square root of x so that is the only form that is um, an independent variable not y and x separately so all it means is that at a given x the function of uh, u as a function of y has one form but at a higher value of x which is down here it has a form which is shifted by a quantity so the form that that it, it goes from zero to this maximum is like an expanded from form that goes from here to the same maximum at a different location x so these are called as similarity solutions the nice thing about this is the way we define the boundary layer thickness remember that the boundary layer thickness was defined as the distance y at which the velocity reaches the 99% of the free stream velocity it turns out that the solution f prime which is nothing but u by u infinity reaches 0.99 which is what we want at eta equal to phi so the solution to the differential equation actually gives this f prime equal to 0.99 at eta, eta equal to phi now we can use this to estimate the boundary layer thickness so what is boundary layer thickness again it's delta which is y this is vertical distance y at when f prime becomes 0.99 when f prime becomes 0.99 so that happens when eta is phi so substituting eta equal to 5 here y is phi divided by square root of u infinity by nu x so that's what we have written here so delta is directly phi divided by square root of u infinity by nu x so using the similarity solution and this one point value we have got a function of delta as a function of x so if you see here x is in the denominator in the uh, denominator of this expression so essentially it is delta going as square root of x or dividing both sides by delta we have delta by x going as if you uh, multiply this by delta you get u infinity into x by nu u infinity x by nu is nothing but reynolds number so this is 1 over reynolds number power half or reynolds power minus 1 by 2 so this is this form and this form are very useful expressions uh, one to remember the functional form as well as to solve some problems now let's look at the heat transfer problem in a laminar boundary layer so once the momentum transfer uh, problem has been solved we have actually ex obtained expressions or numerical values for f of eta now f of eta can be uh, used in the uh, energy balance equation by making the energy balance equation dimensionless by this form theta is t minus ts by t infinity minus ts and theta prime is d theta by the same d eta so the energy balance equation reduces to theta double prime plus pr by 2 f times theta prime again here this is a nonlinear function so that is again multiplying this function uh, so this is again nonlinear differential equation and therefore we cannot solve this uh, analytically but numerical solution can be found uh, 
we will look at some important limits of this problem. Firstly, for Prandtl number greater than 0.6, theta prime, which is d theta by d eta, can be written as 0.332 pr per 1 by 3. So this is a nice approximate formula because most of the fluids, gases included, uh, have PR greater than 0.6. Now, we can derive the expression for Nusselt number. Remember, that was the main, our main objective to obtain expressions for the Nusselt number. Now, Nusselt number is Hx x by k. Now, Hx by k is nothing but 1 by t infinity minus ts, which is the definition of Hx in terms of q. And then q is k times t partial t by partial by. So that k comes down and then we have this expression is Hx by k times this x. Now recognize this 1 by t infinity minus ts times this t is nothing but this theta prime. So this is can be written as partial theta and y can be written in terms of eta. So then you have an x pulling out here. So the writing this first derivative of uh, partial t by partial y in terms of d theta by d eta, we get a factor which is u infinity x by nu power half, which is nothing but Reynolds number per half. So Nusselt number is Reynolds number per half times theta prime. Substituting for theta prime in this expression, we get an expression for Nusselt number 0.332 Reynolds per half Prandtl per 1 by 3. Notice that this Reynolds is a function of x. So as you move along the uh, flat plate x, the Reynolds number defined by this expression also increases. Earlier, we have seen that the Nusselt number is nothing but the inverse thermal boundary layer thickness. Using this and the expression for a laminar boundary layer that we derived in the previous slide, we can obtain the ratio of laminar um, momentum boundary layer to thermal boundary layer to be PR per 1 by 3. This is again another useful uh, uh, scaling relationship that we, uh, is uh, important for laminar flow in uh, flat plates. Most of the uh, equations that we solve for engineering problems, we need the average of heat transfer coefficient and not the in, uh, at the uh, specific location. In the case of a flat plate, there is no length scale. So we cannot define an average over a given area. The area is infinite in the x direction. Therefore, we define a moving average that is uh, h bar is nothing but integral 0 to x of h of x divided by x. So now this expression, if you substitute for h of x from here, we get that this is nothing but 2 times h of x because this has a square root of x dependence. This turns out to be 2 times h of x. So h bar of x is nothing but 2 times h of x. And h of x, uh, so Reynolds, the Nusselt number, we saw it as 332. So the average Nusselt number from 0 to x will be twice that, which is 664. There is no change in re power x and pr power 1 by 3. Now let's see uh, what happens in turbulent flow. For turbulent flow, obviously we don't have an analytical expression and we have to rely on experimental correlations. Firstly, the uh, experimental correlation for the friction factor, which is the momentum, uh, comes from the momentum equations, Cf goes as Re per minus one by five. Remember that the friction factor goes as Re per minus half for laminar boundary layer. For turbulent boundary layer, this goes as Re per minus 1 by 5. 
and this is usually valid in this very large limit of 10 power 5 to 10 power 8 when the boundary layer becomes turbulent. From this, we can find the momentum boundary layer thickness, which goes as Rex power minus 1 by 5 times x. So delta by x goes as Rex minus 1 by 5. So delta goes as x times this. And therefore, this has an um, exponent x power 1 by 5 times x goes as x power 4 by 5. So delta, in the case of turbulent bond layer, goes as x power 4 by 5. Remember, the delta in the case of uh, laminar bond layer went as x power 1 by 2, that is square root of x. 4 by 5, which is 0 0.8, is much more rapid than uh, square root of x dependence. So the turbulent uh, bond layer grows much more faster than the laminar boundary layer. Now, again, using this, we can find the expression for uh, Nusselt number. Again, the Nusselt number here is Rex power 4 by 5. Instead of uh, 1 by 2, we have 4 by 5. And Prandtl number dependence remains the same, Pr per 1 by 3. Again, this is valid in a limited range of Prandtl. These are approximate relationships valid in the limited range of 0.6 to 60 in Prandtl number. Similarly, there are relationships for other regimes, which you can look up depending on the problem that you get. So what we have obtained so far is nusselt number correlation for laminar flow as well as turbulent flow in a, a flow over a flat plate. To summarize, uh, the flat plate boundary layer in which we have a laminar boundary layer, which has got a similarity solution, which is the same form for all x. We also obtained two correlations, one for laminar heat transfer and other for turbulent heat transfer for the Nusselt number. In laminar case, it goes as Rex per 1 by 2, and turbulent it goes as 4 by 5. The Prandtl number dependence of 1 by 3 remains the same. Thank you.